Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Benita here from Benita Doodles and today we are going to find Nemo. Um, as you can see, I attempted a different fish before this one, uh, which is on the other side of the paper. And in true trying not to waste any product, I just flipped the picture over and decided to do the clownfish on the other side. So I'm going to try and talk through exactly the process that I did for this because I want you guys to be able to have a go so although it's time-lapse it's not actually time-lapse that much but I just wanted to still keep it within a certain time so you guys didn't get sort of bored watching essentially uh, but I will talk through the process of how I did it so the image is just uh, copied from a reference I found on Pexels so if you just google clownfish on uh, Pexels Pixabay anywhere that offers three uh, reference pictures you'll be able to find one pretty easily so or you can just copy the one that I've drawn it's not a problem at all so I used the classics and the color that I used were gold which is GY3 amber which is B03 ice gray 2 and 4 which is IG2 and IG4 burnt orange which is B04 burgundy which is DR7 I also use the true black and I use the blender as well as with all of my images I start with my lightest colors first so I've always done them in the order that I work with them so we'll be working with the gold through to the amber the ice gray burnt orange burgundy true black and then the blender we also use to add any highlights later on um, that I decided just to add in really so the gold is the first one that I've gone down with and for the darkest I've used the burnt orange and then the amber is the colour that I have used to do the blending with. So gold will be the light, the burnt orange will be the dark and your amber would be your mid-tone. So um, when you're seeing me do any of the darkest colours you know that I'm going in with the burnt orange. It is a case of getting lots and lots of blending down and it is a case of getting several layers down so don't be afraid to get more than one layer down of each of your colours and get the blending going on them. Don't worry too much if it looks quite dark to begin with because they tend to dry a little bit lighter once the alcohol is dried away from the colour it tends to be a bit lighter than uh, when the ink is wet. The black I pretty much leave till last and I leave all the white as negative space and I then use the grey to create the shadows on that white area so you'll see when we go further through I'm not going to talk through every single part of the drawing here because once you sort of see the process it sort of speaks for itself so I've gone through the colours with you the true black we know that we've used for all the black details the ice grey 4 is for the darkest areas on the lightest parts, sounds contradictory I know, um, and the ice grey 2 and the blender is what we've used to be able to blend your grey shadows on the white areas of your fish into the white, so it's much more of a natural transition. If you've watched the trainer trainers that I did also using the classics, you'll see when I do the shoelaces it's pretty much the same method. And you can see here that I'm getting detail in by turning my uh, nib, my chisel nib upside down and I can get some nice clean edges and some nice details just by flipping that pen over. It's actually a really good way of getting some fine details and sometimes actually finer than the bullet tip so give it a go you'll be surprised actually how fine a detail you can get in with those. The Gold I only really used for the, the most parts where they were more yellow than orange. So the orange parts are mainly done with the amber and the burnt orange. The burgundy comes in when I need it as dark as I can get it without moving into the black zones, the black areas, um, to get it really, really dark because there are no major shadow points on this fish. So just bear that in mind. And again, if you're using burgundy, you then need to blend it out with your burnt orange and then your burnt orange gets blended out with your amber and your amber gets blended out with your gold. So there are a couple of ways uh, for the blending really. 
I tend to go my light, my dark, my mid-tone. Some people go um, dark, mid-tone, light, but it's really down to what you're used to. And if you're completely new to using markers and my tutorials, I would recommend that you try doing the light, the dark, and the medium. Give it a go. If you're not comfortable with it or the way that it turns out, that's absolutely fine. Just have a go in another way, as long as you get that smooth blended transition. Don't stop at only two or three layers. Keep layering on top, ensuring that you're getting a smooth blend. You have to saturate your paper. Those of you that have followed me for some time now are probably bored of me hearing me say it, but it needs to be repeated. And yes, so you can use the same colour to go over the same area to make it darker like you see that I'm doing here. here. Uh, but there is a point where you cannot get any more colour down on your paper. You are fully saturated and there is no more ink colour that you can get so it won't go any darker. That is when you need to start then bringing in the darker versions or an alternative colour to help you create the depth and the shadows that are needed. That's pretty much all you need to hear from me really. I shall let it continue through. It's worth having a watch all the way through to the end because you can really see how much blending and how many layers go into something as simple as a little fish drawing. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, if you enjoy it, if you find it helpful, or even if you have a go, I'd love to know, pop in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I've got a load more tutorials coming up. Some of them are a little bit more in depth. Uh, but yeah, hit the notification for all and I shall see you guys on the next video.